Welcome to an advanced clinical care tutorial. This series of tutorials will cover aspects of caring for patients with complicated HIV and TB disease in Department of Health facilities in South Africa, compiled by the NICD and the National Department of Health and facilitated by Dr. Madeleine Muller, Clinical Advisor for Beyond Zero. This is module six of eight modules on the prevention, diagnosis, and management of cryptococcal meningitis. This module will cover key aspects of managing complications and side effects of amphotericin B. As outlined in the previous module, amphotericin B is toxic, with the most dangerous complications being renal impairment due to renal tubular toxicity and the more common problem of thrombophlebitis. This is a slide from the previous module reminding us of the monitoring bloods that needs to be taken on patients on amphotericin B. But how do we respond if we find an abnormal result? Let us start with the management of a low potassium. If the serum potassium is less than 3 millimoles per litre, it is essential to replace with IVI potassium by adding 2 ampules of elemental potassium to 1 litre of normal saline. That is a total of 40 millimoles of potassium and infuse it slowly over 8 hours. Potassium levels must be measured daily and if possible check the magnesium or at least double the oral magnesium dose. For persistent hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia consider IVI magnesium sulfate. Febrile reactions may occur due to amphob. It is essential to infuse at a slow rate for the first 30 minutes and to observe the patient closely for any increases in temperature. For those that have febrile reactions to the infusions, paracetamol 1 gram may be given 30 minutes before the next infusion. For severe reactions, hydrocortisone 25 mg IVI can be administered before subsequent infusions. But patients with CM can be very sick on admission and may already have a strain on the kidneys. Our patient, Mr. ZZ, has a baseline creatinine of 250 micromoles per litre and is also on rifampicin for TB treatment. Are these antifungal drugs contraindicated or should dose adjustments be made? Can we give our normal induction phase of TB treatment? Although rifampicin can reduce fluconazole at these dosages, no dose adjustment needs to be made. But what about the amphob and the kidneys? The HIV Clinical Society guideline gives us a useful algorithm in approaching patients with pre-existing renal dysfunction and can also be used in patients with increased creatinins. If the serum creatinine doubles from baseline, one dose of the amphotericin B may be omitted and prehydration must be increased to one litre of normal saline eight hourly. Serum creatinine should then be monitored daily. If the serum creatinine improves, amphob may be started at 0.7 mg per kilogram per day and alternate day treatment should be considered. If the creatinine was normal initially and now stays elevated, or if the creatinine is worsening, amphob should be stopped and fluconazole used, adjusted as necessary for the reduced kidney function as outlined in the table below. Of concern is that the guideline does not specify a creatinine cutoff when starting amphob. All patients with very high creatinine must be discussed with a nephrologist or a physician. In summary, it is important to respond appropriately and speedily to side effects in patients on amphob to prevent the increased morbidity. Do not hesitate to consult an expert when managing patients with reduced renal function with cryptococcal meningitis. Thank you.